Hey guys, welcome back to Your Hero Clicks Headquarters. So it's that time again for Power of the Week, the show where we take a look at a Hero Clicks power, go over its strengths and weaknesses and how to use it, and then take a look at some of my personal favorite characters that can use it really well. Uh, and this time we're going to go over one of the best speed powers in the game, hypersonic speed. So, as always, to help us figure out what it does, let's take a look at our handy dandy pack and it's going to be under the brown speed power but before we take a look at hypersonic speed itself to make it make a little bit more sense first we're going to go over the improved movement ability that it gives us which is the two circles with the arrow through it and what that means is that this character can move through squares adjacent to or occupied by opposing characters without stopping but still needs to break away normally so now that we know what that does, like I said, we can look under the brown speed power, hypersonic speed, breakaway plus two, power, half range, improved movement, can move through squares adjacent to or occupied by opposing characters but still needs to break away normally, passenger zero, move, then make an attack, then move up to your speed value minus the number of squares just moved. So. Uh, that might sound pretty confusing at first, but it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So as always, let's go to the map and check it out. Alright, so as you guys can see here, we have the Flash, who's got the brown color on his movement square there. That gives him hypersonic speed. So all we have to do to use our hypersonic speed is take a power action, move, however many squares we need to, in this case one, two, three. Make our attack over here against the human torch, hit or miss, then we would have to roll breakaway, because if we're adjacent we still have to roll breakaway, but don't forget that you get plus two to your breakaway roll, so anything that's not a one will succeed, and then you'll get to move uh, up to the remainder of your speed value. So since we only moved three squares to get here, he's got a 10 movement, so he's gonna be able to go up to seven squares after that. Uh, anywhere you'd like, of course, back where you were, around the corner, down the stairs. Um, so that's really the great thing about hypersonic speed is it gives you that ability to hit and run uh, back over here somewhere into a position that they might not be able to get to you. Uh, you would, of course, still have to stop if you enter hindering, if you don't ignore hindering terrain for movement. But, you know, just getting around the corner behind a wall, uh, getting into hindering terrain to, to boost your defense against range attacks can be a really good strategy still. So now let's say we wanted to use hypersonic speed with Human Torch. We'd, of course, give him his power action, move him up to his speed value, one, two, three, four... And now from here, he's got a six range. We have to half his range. So he's only gonna be able to shoot for three squares. So one, two, he's within our range. We make our range attack, hit or miss. Uh, we are not adjacent, so we don't have to break away. So we only moved four squares to get over here. He also has a 10 movement. So that gives us six remaining spaces we can move. Now, since he has flight, this does allow us to you know, ignore the elevated, the hindering, whatever we want to, be able to get wherever we want to be to make it even more difficult for our opponent to get to us. Now, another one of the advantages to using hypersonic speed is being able to ignore adjacent characters and move through them as well. So for your specifically close combat attackers, uh, it makes it much easier to get through your opponent's frontline defenses and get to their backline ranged attackers and support characters uh, where normally you wouldn't be able to reach them with a charge figure and uh, they might block line of fire for a normal ranged attack. Just being able to move straight through them or beside them, uh, being able to attack the target that you really need to get rid of the most, and then still being able to run back into safety can be a very effective tactic. So obviously hypersonic speed is great when comboed with something like flight or improved movement, 
Now, the only downside to this being you have passenger zero when using hypersonic speed. So you cannot carry any characters to help you, no empower or enhancement type pieces. Uh, so in this case, if our Superman over here wanted to try and move and make a hypersonic attack on Quicksilver, he would not be able to carry his friend Flash uh, to make use of his probability control. He's gonna be stuck over here where it's gonna be mostly useless. Now, one of the drawbacks to hypersonic speed is that it only gives you a basic attack and not an action. So it's important to note that since you can't take a ranged or close combat action, uh, you can't make a ranged or close destroy action either. So even if you had a three or more damage, you cannot hypersonic to destroy a wall or square blocking terrain and then continue to move because uh, it only gives you an attack, not an action. To destroy a wall or square blocking terrain, you need to make a close or range destroy action by being given a close or range action. And since this only lets you do an attack, you cannot destroy a wall or blocking terrain. Now let's take a look at some of the powers that combo best with hypersonic speed. Now since hypersonic speed only allows you to make a basic range or close attack and not an action, you're not gonna be able to use things like exploit weakness, uh, penetrating psychic blast, pulse wave, flurry, uh, any of those type of cool abilities that you would normally be able to use with charge or running shot. It's gonna be a basic attack. So uh, there are still a couple things that we can take advantage of with that. For instance, on Black Panther here, he's got the pink attack power precision strike and the orange damage power battle fury. So precision strike is one of the best combos with hypersonic speed, because as long as you attack a single character, uh, the damage dealt can't be reduced below one, and it's gonna give your opponent a minus one on their super sense rolls. So effectively, they're gonna have to roll a six. And then having battle fury, says that opposing characters can't use shape change for your attacks. Um, now, Battle Fury does have the drawback of not being able to make ranged attacks, but for a character like this Black Panther that doesn't have range, having both Precision Strike and Battle Fury gets through those dreaded Super Senses and shape change combos and uh, allows you to still do one damage no matter what, even if they have a reducer, so characters like Starfire here that have shape change and invulnerability. Uh, he's gonna be able to do one damage to her no matter what, and she's not gonna be able to make use of her shape change. And of course, the Flash is gonna get a minus one on his super sense rolls, or maybe ones that have super senses and shape change. Um, having one or both of these powers can be very good for hypersonic speed, as well as having stealth. Stealth is another great power to combo with hypersonic speed. Now these are both speed powers. However, there are many characters that can use stealth through a trait, or they might have both as a special movement power, or of course, equipping a character with an object that gives them one or the other. Anything that you can do to give a character uh, stealth and hypersonic can be a very effective combo, since after using your normal hypersonic attack, and then moving away into some hindering can make it much more difficult for your opponent to deal with that hypersonic character because for one, they're not gonna be able to outwit your hypersonic speed, so they're not gonna be able to pre prevent you from using hit and run tactics on them over and over again. And it's also gonna make it much more difficult for them to counterattack you, especially if most of their characters are ranged based and they're not gonna be able to draw line of fire to shoot you. They're gonna have to take a whole action to try to get close to you which is not really where ranged characters want to be. Certain characters can also make great use of knockback for hypersonic speed. Now that knockback can come from many sources. Uh, the most common ones are gonna be super strength and force blast. So if a character has hypersonic and super strength, uh, whenever they make a close attack, they're gonna be able to choose to generate knockback, which can of course knock a character off of elevated train or into a wall or whatever, however you position yourself, uh, which is of course very easy to do when you have so much freedom of movement with hypersonic speed. 
to get into the best place to be able to knock them back for maximum damage output. Same thing goes, of course, for Force Blast. Uh, again, these being two different movement powers, there are several characters that can use both via a special power or a trait. So being able to hypersonic into the best position to knock a character back for more damage can be incredibly powerful. And of course, the other benefit for knocking back characters during your hypersonic attacks is that you won't have to roll for breakaway. You'll just be able to continue your movement. Now, this isn't a big deal since hypersonic does give you that plus two to your breakaway rolls, but I've seen plenty of ones come up when trying to break away on a hypersonic. So not having to risk that one is always the best option. All right, so now it's that time for me to go over some of my personal favorite hypersonic speedsters. Now, you can't talk about hypersonic speed in Hero Clicks without talking about Superman. Why is that? Because this guy right here changed the face of the game. So I had to mention him. And why is that? Because you know how we have that rule that with hypersonic speed, you have to have your range. Um, this guy is why that is a rule. This guy is why they had to put that in the power. Uh, so if you can see his stats there, he starts out with a 13 hypersonic speed, a 12 attack super strength, 18 impervious, and five damage. And of course, flight with a 10 range as well. So back when this guy was released, you could actually hypersonic for 13 squares and shoot for 10. Uh, and of course, having a 12 attack, five damage, and not to mention the Superman team ability to see through hindering uh, was just incredibly overpowered. <laughs> uh, I mean, they did call this the no fun Superman, the instant win point and click Superman. Like, <laughs> it takes no thought really to use this guy. You just, uh, you know, 251 points actually leaves you enough room for some perplex or some TK or something. Uh, and back then you could TK like eight squares at least. So you could uh, move out eight squares, hypersonic like seven more, shoot for 10, hypersonic back like six more. Maybe you have a second long range TKer on standby uh, to actually TK him back all the way back into your starting area. It's pretty stupid. Uh, and then you know you land that attack for five damage. You're probably crippling their best figure, maybe even KOing uh, one of their supports uh, is stupid. That's why it's a rule though, you guys. That's why we have to half a range because 10 range, 13 movement, no good. Uh, it's too much. <laughs> uh, realistic, I guess, for Superman, but, but really too much. Anyway, moving on to this other Superman here, the new one from the JLU starter. Uh, the reason I like him is because he's got a trait, founding member, speed plus two, but only if your force has four or more characters with the Justice League keyword. And then starting off with a 10 movement hypersonic, uh, basically makes that a 12 movement hypersonic. Uh, he's got flight, 12 attack, four damage, and uh, his other trait that gives him super strength. And as a free action, you can place him adjacent to a character he knocked back this turn, uh, and then he can make another attack on that character. So uh, the super strength giving him the knockback, of course, hypersonic, punch him, knock him back a couple squares, maybe, take some knockback damage, play some adjacent, make another free attack. It's really strong uh, and really powerful. He does only have hypersonic for one click though, so not too bad. Some other great DC hypersonic speedsters are Starfire. Uh, I talked a little bit about her in the energy explosion video, but she's back again for the same reasons. Uh, so you can see on her attack power there, she has energy explosion and she may use it at no cost instead of a range attack while using hypersonic speed. You still have your range, which is fine. So she opens with a hypersonic speed, seven range, double target, which is gonna be four range, double target. Great stats and powers throughout the whole dial. Uh, and just a really cool trick to be able to hypersonic and double target energy explosion, because uh, there's really not any characters that can normally do that. Plus she looks really awesome. Look at that, super cool. Uh, and then over here we have Shazam, also from the Rebirth set, same as Starfire. He looks super awesome as well. Uh, and he does something very similar. I think I also talked about him in the Quake video because 
on his special attack power there, he has Quake and Shazam may use it at no cost instead of a close attack while using hypersonic speed. And again, just like Starfire, starts out with that hypersonic and some great stats and powers as well. Um, and yeah, pretty much the same thing as Starfire being able to hypersonic and then hit a bunch of people with Quake and knock them back and everything is super cool and different that not a lot of people can do. And then over here from JLU, we have the starter set Wonder Woman. Uh, same reason as the starter set Superman I just showed you guys, because she's got that founding members trait that gives her that plus two to speed as long as you have four or more Justice League characters. But for only 100 or 40 points, she starts with hypersonic and flight, indomitable and some leadership and everything else there. Uh, but that special attack power is really interesting. So when Wonder Woman hits with a range attack until your next turn, a hit target gains a mobile and can't use a damage powers. And to be able to do that for 40 points or 100, either way is incredibly powerful. But of course you didn't think I was gonna talk about hypersonic speed without talking about the Flash, the fastest man alive. So to start us off, I mean, first of all, we could talk about literally any Flash in the game. They're all great at using hypersonic speed. Uh, but we're just gonna talk about some of the newest and best ones. So to start us off, we have uh, the Flash from, again, the Justice League Unlimited starter set. Getting that founding members trait for that plus two speed uh, is incredibly useful for a hypersonic. Um, but then starting off with this special version of hypersonic that he, as a power action, he gets improved movement characters and can move up to his speed value and then make a close attack targeting all characters he moved through, regardless of adjacency. And instead of normal damage, deal each hit target one penetrating damage, then knock back each hit character one square in the direction of your choice. Uh, so while that's not technically hypersonic speed, it acts very similar to it. And uh, he does get regular hypersonic speed if you just want to do that. Um, but being able to run through your opponent's entire team, dealing them all penetrating damage and knocking them all back a square can really mess up your opponent's plans. Um, and at 100 or 60 points, he's great uh, with that plus two to speed. You know, we're talking about 14 to 13 hypersonic. Uh, I think he's a little bit better at the 60 point line just because he starts out with that 11 attack precision strike. But he starts out with a perplex on either line, so that's really helpful as well. Uh, moving on. The common flash from JLU uh, for only 30 points really brings you everything that you're going to want uh, with a 10 movement hypersonic, some super senses, and outwit for only 30 points. I mean, that's like the cheapest hypersonic in the game, uh, and he brings some outwit on top of it, so you really can't go wrong there. But I also love the uncommon flash from JLU, having that improved movement elevated and hindering uh, is of course super helpful to get around with hypersonic speed. And he starts with a special movement power that gives him hypersonic speed and as a free action. This turn you can modify his speed plus three, but he can only move in direct paths, uh, which is not too terrible. He does start out there with that 12 movement for hypersonic and indomitable. Uh, so being able to get a 15 hypersonic, even if you have to move in a direct path, is just nuts. Plus, I really love his other trait, uh, around the world in 80 milliseconds free if the Flash occupies a square on the edge of the map, and that edge is the longest edge of the map or tied for it. Place him in a square of the same row or column on the opposite edge of the map from this edge. Uh, he can't be placed in a starting area this way. So basically what that means, if he's on like the left or right side of the map, uh, you can give him a free action to just place him on the row of the other side of the map. It's just really cool, like quick run around the world type of power. I think it's super fun and very Flash-like. And the last Flash I wanna talk about is of course the Chase Treble Alert Flash. Uh, being able to call him in off your sideline is super helpful, but then having that special movement power up there that gives him flight and hypersonic speed uh, is great for only 60 or 30 points. He's got great stats. He starts with some precision strike, super senses, and prob on either line. Uh, I mean, 30 points, like I just said for the common one, 30 points for hypersonic and outwit is great. 30 points for hypersonic precision strike and prob is probably even better. 
Um, and, uh, you know, the ability to call him in off the sideline once you've missed a few attacks is super helpful. All right, and on the Marvel side of things, the fastest characters we have are all Silver. Silver Surfer and Quicksilver. Uh, so starting us off with the new rare Silver Surfer. He does a lot of things, but of course we're just going to talk about hypersonic speed today. So on his movement power there, he has hypersonic speed, and when Silver Surfer uses it, after resolutions you may choose a character that he hit or moved through. The chosen character gains immobile until your next turn. Uh, so just like the Wonder Woman we just took a look at, gaining immobile is incredibly powerful. Uh, he also generates this Don Greenwood bystander and has incredibly good stats and powers. Uh, so that 12 movement with flight and hypersonic, uh, and then that 12 attack, he's got some prob there to make sure he hits. Uh, and you know, being able to make somebody immobile and then move so far away that they have no hope of reaching him uh, can be incredibly useful uh, and he's just so good in so many other ways as well and uh, he even has uh, regular hypersonic speed there on the back so he's got hypersonic the whole dial which is crazy plus he's got that super awesome sculpt flying through a portal looking awesome now that brings us to our other silver surfer from the fantastic four starter set also looking awesome flying on that Silver Surfboard. Taking a look at what he does. He's got improved movement characters, which means he's never gonna have to break away. And then on his movement power, he's got hypersonic speed, and when Silver Surfer uses it, he may be given a range action at no cost instead of making an attack, which is extra powerful uh, because he has this trait that as a free action, he can choose a standard attack power. And Silver Surfer can use the chosen power and characters he hits can't use the chosen power. So that can be extremely powerful, which can be even worse when you combo it with his special damage power that gives him free choose and improve targeting ability, except ignores blocking to use until your next turn. You may still choose ignores and destroys one piece of blocking terrain. Uh, you just can't ignore it altogether. You have to at least destroy it. Uh, so that is incredibly powerful using all three of those together. He has several different starting lines. He has a very high movement. He has an eight range and incredibly high stats on any of his starting lines. And no matter if you start out at 300, 200, or 100, he's going to be able to use that hypersonic. To use all of that with hypersonic speed is insane. And then coming over here to Quicksilver, we have the Quicksilver from the uh, Uncanny X-Men set. So one cool thing he does is he has a trait where when Quicksilver moves through a square, you may immediately place the speed shadow marker in it, removing it from anywhere else. Whenever Quicksilver makes a close attack, he may target characters adjacent to his speed shadow marker. And then on his movement power, he has Quicksilver can use hypersonic speed, when he does, he can automatically break away and he can use Flurry as a free action instead of the close attack. So that's pretty awesome. Starting out with that 13 hypersonic 11 attack, 3 damage. Uh, being able to use Flurry, automatically break away. Uh, and then I actually didn't grab the speed shadow marker, but it's basically the same thing he has here. It's like a big whooshing effect. You just uh, It's one of those FX bases. You just put it in a square. Um, and being able to essentially hypersonic way up, hit somebody, you know, put his uh, speed channel marker down, hypersonic back. And the cool thing is, after you've done that, you can actually use hypersonic to just run back even further, like your full movement back in your starting area, and still hit somebody way up in their starting area that you uh, attacked because you left your speed channel marker there. It gives him an insane amount of reach. Uh, it's pretty crazy. And then the other Quicksilver I have here, uh, I think I already showed him off in the Force Blast video, but I do like him a lot. Hypersonic and Force Blast is a great combo. Uh, I talked about that earlier in the video, letting you knock people back uh, so that you don't have to break away and to potentially do some knockback damage is great. And having a 14 Hypersonic with that 18 defense with energy shield deflection. And it's also worth noting that on his damage power, he has probability control, but only for his own rolls. Now surprisingly, Black Panther is also a great hypersonic speedster. And now while they don't have the highest speed values, like the Flash having a 14 for instance, uh, 
these two can do some really great things. So this Chase 1 million BC Black Panther has improved movement for elevated and hindering, which is going to be great for hypersonic. Uh, he also has traded stealth, and opposing characters can't draw a line of fire to Black Panther if he occupies printed hindering terrain, protect pulse wave. So that's insanely good, super stealth, um, as if regular stealth wasn't good enough. I already explained that earlier in the video. Um, he has traded blades and can shut off blades within three squares, which is nice. And then whenever another friendly Black Panther hits, you can remove an action token. So uh, you can actually run two or three of this guy, and after they hit, they remove action tokens from the other ones. But yeah, I mean, only an eight movement, but with that 12 attack, three damage. Like I already said earlier, hypersonic combo is great with precision strike and battle fury. Uh, he's got high defenses with that super senses and the super stealth. Uh, indomitable and only 85 points like he's really really good he's really incredibly hard to hit and to get to and he really maximizes hypersonic speed even for having a uh, lower speed value and now the other one I wanted to talk about is the man without fear who also ignores elevated and hindering for movement and he also has traded stealth but at the end of your turn if he occupies printed hindering terrain, you may heal him one click. So some built-in healing on top of that stealth is pretty awesome. And then on his movement power, he has sidestep. And if he occupies printed hindering terrain, he can use hypersonic with a locked speed value of six. But if he doesn't end his movement in a square of hindering terrain, deal him one unavoidable damage after action is resolved. Uh, it's not too bad because you do have sidestep no matter what. So what you can actually do is if you can hypersonic out of the hindering, hit them, and then hypersonic as long as you can get within two squares of hindering terrain, um, you know, you'll take the unavoidable damage for not ending your movement in hindering, but then you can sidestep into some more hindering terrain, and at the end of your turn, you just heal a click for being in hindering terrain. So it's uh, really not too bad. Uh, it's kind of really like an eight square hypersonic, if you think about it. Plus, he's got really good stats and powers for only 75 points. But the last one I wanted to talk about on the Marvel side is... Captain Marvel. Uh, she is probably my favorite hypersonic speedster right now. So she does have the Assembled Avengers trait, which, uh, you know, if you're on an Avengers team, gives you the slight chance of taking an action token off yourself or giving one to a hit character or both if you have a lot of Avengers. She, of course, has this amazing free once per game generate a chewy bystander. Uh, but the real reason we're here is for hypersonic speed. When Captain Marvel uses it after resolutions deal one penetrating damage to an opposing character she moved through. If that character is a vehicle, deal it three penetrating damage instead. So, uh, of course, she also has stop, invincible, protected outwit on everything. Uh, and then looking at her dial, you know, super crazy. For 150 or 95 points, getting a hypersonic to make attacks and also to move through characters, especially, um, you know, like a pog, you know, like a little bystander token, or... Uh, to move through a Colossal Retaliator just to ping them for that one free penetrating damage and get rid of them while you focus your main attack on something else is incredibly helpful. And then free action to drop the Chewy Bystander uh, at the end of your Hypersonic and that thing has Flurry, Giant Reach 2, and Blades, and Perplex, uh, which is just too good really after already running through something for a free damage and hitting it and then Getting a flurry blades with an 11 attack after that is insane. Plus she's got prob to help out if she needs it. Uh, so she is super strong. But also make sure to be on the lookout for the other Captain Marvel that has the same sculpt as this one uh, that comes in the Avengers vs. Masters of Evil starter set. I've got one of those on the way and I'm going to do an unboxing video for it for you guys. But I just wanted to point out that the Captain Marvel on that is also great because she can hypersonic and then if she hits, she can use charge at no cost, uh, which is really great for only a 75 point character. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. If you learned something, make sure you smash that like button and don't forget to leave me any questions you have in the comments. And it's important to let me know what powers you want me to cover next time on Power of the Week. So don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Hero Clips Headquarters, signing off.